maximum well and, and uh, take into account the Birch's comment uh, about um, we, we've got the uh, task group in terms of paying back the property. We need to uh, re establish that task group and, and have a meeting of the task group, probably with the monetary officer. You yeah. start yeah. uh, and look, and look at some terms of reference, and then at some point invite Mr. Birch so he can outline his role. He's delegated the role because the panel delegates him to do it. Uh, and then create a process uh, where we have a monitoring system of, of the complaints. So if we, if we could take that forward as a, a group, that would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so if we move now move to item 13 on the agenda, appointment of additional corporate members. Uh, Mr. West, I think you're off is that there. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, this is uh, really. Um, a sort of hangover from the, the time of time that East Lindsay were the Secretariat. They've done some research into a request, I think, that came from the panel to look into the possibility of increasing the number of co opted members on the panel. Uh, it is possible. Uh, the panel currently has two co opted members, um, but it can, if it wishes, increase that number uh, with the agreement of the Secretary of State, um, provided that co opted members do not exceed uh, 10 in number. Um, for obvious reasons. Um, considerations you will need to um, take into consideration is the Home Office guidance, which recommends that it's good practice that um, a skills audit is carried out prior to um, uh, that uh, increase in, in numbers. Because um, independent members are full voting members, of course, um, and um, they, they can be members of local authorities as long as there are the other two. Uh, or the existing two um, co opted members are not members of the party. So you have that option as well. Uh, and uh, co opted members have a term of, of four years, uh, four year period uh, on, on the panel. Um, the uh, remuneration of co opted men, uh, members is uh, covered in the report and uh, it, it's usually in line with the post authorities published members allowance scheme. Our um, IRP, our independent remuneration, uh, we're meeting in, in, the, in the autumn in September to, um, to consider um, remuneration. So it's probably something that could be picked up there if, if it was your wish to uh, proceed with this. But I think the first thing to consider are the um, considerations on um, page 124 of your pack. Um, whether you wish to perform a skills audit before initiating further uh, recruitment, um, whether you wish to increase the number of co opted members, uh, seek uh, approval from the Secretary of State, um, and on the condition that the Secretary, Secretary of State does agree, amend, amend the uh, parallel arrangements. So these are the, the, the sorts of things you'll have to consider uh, going forward. Um, so, um, that's that's my report. And if you have any, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. The, the we have uh, um, in the handover with East Lindsay, we have um, uh, uh, picked up the research that they did, and uh, there are a number of uh, panels that do have additional uh, co-opted members, more than the two. For instance, Nottinghamshire has four, Haven three, Cheshire three, North Yorkshire three, and South Yorkshire three, and it's a way of um, Helping with that skills uh, balance across the across the whole of the panel. So, yeah. I'll leave that with you, Chair. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I just ask: is, is this a skills audit of the whole panel, or the two co-opted me current members? I believe it's across the whole panel. Really, ah. it's, it's to create that that balance of skills and knowledge and experience. Uh, it's an opportunity rather than uh, an assistance, but it's an opportunity that the Home Office have. Uh, um, uh, recognised that is an opportunity for you to to get that panel, that term um, skills uh, level balanced. Thank you, Councillor Beer. Thank you. Um, I'm just going through a similar exercise at South Holland uh, for a lay member for my government audit, and we're also doing uh, a skills audit for the current membership of the committee. Is there a template? That's already in use elsewhere for establishing sort of skills audit, please. And with regards to possibly 
um, increasing the membership, how many interests, how many people of interest sort of came forward when we went through the last process to recruit, please? Because, of course, doing the skills audit also will highlight for the existing um, members where we may need additional training. Sorry, Chairman, I can't answer the second no, part. No, I know you can't. Um, we, we weren't involved. But... Councillor Marsh was uh, chairing that. I, I, do you, can you recall what, how many we came for? We had two came for interview. Right. Um, I'm not sure, I can't remember if, if there were more than two applied, but I know we interviewed two. And this this came about because we thought both would be yeah. good yeah. candidates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we looked at, and um, and we thought, well, this is an opportunity. And we, we, we asked the question, could we point more than one? And then this is where it decided to, to un unravel as such. Um, for me, if it's a couple of points now, I'm speaking about a race. Yeah, of course. Um, I think I, for me, in some ways, I think doing a skill tour is a waste of time because every four years we're going to change anyway. So it's a skill tour which is completely. Changing in four years. The chances are that a lot of some of us may come back, but I think the next time around, looking at the table, <laughs> there might be a lot of new members. What are you saying, Councillor? <laughs> well, I think a lot of you look like you're the same as me. You look more out to go. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, so I, but I, 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 I just put that in that I, I don't want to waste time and, and officers' time, which is it really. Important to do something that we're not going to be really serious about taking forward, and and if we do take it forward, how much benefit are we going to get from it? Do we do we really want another coated member? It, it just the fact that it was, there was the question raised that both were good, both were right. Yes, yes, um, do we want to carry on with this? I'm, I'm quite easy either way, but I think it's something we should consider. Councillor Trotter. Yeah, obviously it's with Graham and. He's quite correct. We had two really good, obviously we've got David here today, but two outstanding, I felt, candidates. And we were, it's a shame to, to, you know, it's a shame that we couldn't get the other very well qualified gentlemen. And that's how it came back. But I don't know. I mean, how do you, how do you measure a skill set of people like well, us? Well, that's what yeah. so yeah, that's... I don't know, I'd like to think that's you've all got good life experience with a bit of professionalism, but it's a hell of a, a job, isn't it? How would you measure it? And like you say, for what end, when we might not be here in 40 years? Councillor Burke. Yeah, th thanks, Steve. It depends what kind of skills audit you really want. Uh, and and where you're referencing it. I mean, we, we asked about is there an example of a skills audit? Well, Lincolnshire YMCA uses a skills audit system of the kind generally this this is best practice across uh community services in general. It's not specific to police and crime or, or us. Everybody is asked to look at the uh whether they're deploying their boards, or trustees, or in our case, panel members effectively in using all of their skills. Now, if that's the purpose, then that's, that's quite useful. And the way you do it is you carry out a skills audit. You get everyone to put in their experience and you have a process where you examine it. And you may then say, well, my God, I didn't know that Councillor Trotter could do that. Well, yeah, let's give her another job then in within the... Yeah. Did you know? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 investigation skills. So. Um, so there's that. Um, uh, and I'm, in a sense, I'm playing devil's advocate to say, well, how useful is it, given that there's officer time involved? In the YMCA, uh, we did find that, in fact, it was extremely useful, and we discovered um, that, that there were board members with skills, some people had run companies, for example, and some people had financial experience we weren't aware of, so we banged them onto the Finance Committee immediately without any question. Um, so that the other side of it is how big a number of independents people do we want. And I'm looking at, and I'm very grateful to Nigel and his team for uh, the examples that we see. It'd be interesting to know how many police and crime panels only had two. Um, I think that would be an interesting piece of intelligence to see. Um, 
we are facing uh, massive political change one way or another. Uh, I think there could you could argue that uh, genuinely independent members of the kind we've had uh, bring a level of stability to uh, situations like Councillor March and I may bring chaos, whereas ladies, they may bring stability. And I think in Chris's case and in David's case, we and, and in uh, our previous friend George, yeah, I think excellent. I mean, if we could have George back, I'd say three is the perfect number. So, you know, I've got a feel that uh, yeah, independent members really useful. I wouldn't go anywhere near ten. Um, I don't want to disturb the balance that uh, that naturally evolves from the districts, but uh, I could see three. Yeah. Is it, but skills, are, it's not mandate, we don't have to do the skills. No, no, it's only a recommendation. Because what if, if you, I'll yeah. bring in a minute, Councillor, yeah. if, if we do the skills only and we, we establish that we had a gap on this panel, for example, in digital forensics, which we probably have, <laughs> and then you want to advertise for an independent member. Oh, you're not going to get them. You, well, you could get them, but you, in, in terms of advertising and, and uh, equal opportunities. How, how how on earth do you achieve that? I, I personally, I, I I don't think we need a skills audit. No, okay. I, I think it would be uh, a lot of time for our officers to do that. Um, I, I like the idea of having an extra independent member, but I would because I'm an independent member <coughs> myself, and it's it's the panel's decision, and I respect that. But uh, but. Uh, I, I think a skills audit doesn't necessarily achieve what we want to achieve. Yes, uh, Councillor. Oh, no, yeah. Sorry, I thought you hadn't seen that. I recognise it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to withdraw my support. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I think Chris has stole, just stole my speech, and I hadn't even got it written down. I don't know, did it? Yeah. But, um, but um, a police support, I mean, I support Graham, I do when a skills set uh, audit would identify what we haven't got and what we have got, and then if you advertise, you know, and you get somebody coming forward who's got, you know, great business experience, you're going to say, oh, no, no, we're not really looking for you, you know, we, we want somebody. And it's, I just don't see as that kind of works. We're looking for really people who are, who are you know, concerned about, you know, um, and, and and have got something to offer, like yourself and the, um, you know, the other co team member here today. Thank you. And um, I think you guys offer something we as councillors don't offer. Personally, I think the, um, let's just move ahead, I think the chair of this panel should always be an independent co op team, um, not a politician, as we all are, whether we're independent or whatever you know, party we are. And that, and I think that just keeps it a nice balance so that we're not, we don't get political uh, as, as sometimes we might, you know, if we were just one side or another, you know. Um, so I really welcome the opportunity, I've got to say. I think Chris is right, we've got to look at the number. You said an additional one. I'm not sure whether an additional two or, I don't know, an additional two. Certainly not an additional 10, thanks very much. No, no, no. But, um, so I don't think we should restrict ourselves to that extra one until we've gone out there and seen what's available. Okay. As you said previously, you went out and advertised and there wasn't a huge, um, um, you know, people queuing up to, to do the job. But um, if you did get two or three, then perhaps... It might be worth considering saying, well, yeah, we'll we'll take these three and not not these other, you know. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Skinner. Yeah, yeah I, I would you. just like come in and say that the last one we created obviously was David, and we had an induction package with you that everybody sat through. And um, skills gap, or whatever, all it is about is about training. You, there was the update mm, that's right. with county lines, um, and I, I think constant training through the year and a good package ready to go for the next lot, lot of elections. So it, it's there, and you can pick it up whether you're an independent member, whether you're a, a, a local authority member, whatever. It's there and ready. Skills skills gap. I think 
I think it's more important we have people from very different backgrounds. Sure. We've got people from different backgrounds, policing. I mean, I, I, I've sat in charge of the company as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, but it's all those different skills that we bring together yeah. that are important. But we do need to set that platform with initial training and constantly improve it, which we are doing. Thank you for that. <clears throat> David. On the skills audit front, so I, I would, well, from my perspective, there is only value in doing the skills audit if you've got a clear idea from the outset as to what skills you require across yeah. the level. So yeah. that would need to be established, I would suggest, for it to be a meaningful exercise. Um, secondly, bearing in mind what you've already highlighted and the fact that there is likely to be some churn, um, then if you weren't going to conduct that skills audit routinely or invite local authorities to a point in relation to the required skills on the panel, in a nutshell, it just becomes too complex, I would suggest, for the needs that you have. Related to that, however, in terms of the value of independent members, and yes, I speak from the vested interest, I guess, but before I came onto the panel before I applied to the panel. I, I, I had looked into the value of police and crime panels and there is limited research out there yeah. that has considered their utility and clearly there are views, not least our own commissioner has a view on the effectiveness and usefulness of police and crime panels. But the one thing I can say, and I'm very happy again to share the documents, I think I shared it with you, yeah. Chris, uh, there is there, there is a, an academic, I think he's Portsmouth University, he, he did his PhD thesis on police and crime panels, and he also submitted a, uh, an article, or a series of articles, I think, to uh, Policing Insight. But of the many things that he concluded, one thing that appeared evident to him through his research was that independent the independent members mm. even though i say so myself in general bring added value yeah. to police and crime panels over and above that which elected members might do in certain circumstances because their interest if you like or vested interest is different their motivation mm. is different from that uh, generalized statements here i know but but nevertheless that was the conclusion he drew which which suggests that potentially by having more independent members, and I reserve judgment on my contribution, but having additional independent members may actually add considerable value to the panel. Did you want to come back on that, Councillor Dill? Um, yeah, I fully support what you said, David, there. Um, I was on the uh, former police authority many years ago. Uh, obviously, the, this is kind of a replacement for in some ways, I think. But, um, and I've got to say that, as I recall, seemed to have much, a much more of a balance of independent members on it. It did. Yeah. Do, do you yeah. remember, Chris? Yeah. Only Fit Pond was the chair. Wasn't he, it? Yeah. No, he was never the chair, but he was he was on it. Yeah, he was, he was on, on it. it. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying it was. Yes, it was political people appointees from each. Other, but it, the, uh, I don't think all the districts were on it at the time. But yeah. it did have a better um, spread. Of, of expertise from, you know, who came with the independent hat on. And yes, they gave what you were bringing, you know, something different. Um, so I really welcome that. And as I say, I don't think we should restrict ourselves to the to one. I think we should okay. consider, you know, more than one. Okay, well, I'll, I'll come back to that. But yeah. Councillor Bill wants to come in. Uh, thank you. Fully understand sort of we, um, skills, etc. Um, with regards to the number of additional lay members, do we need to put a number on how many extra we would like? I know it says we could go up to 10, and obviously the last thing we want to do is to say we want to go up to 10. But if we were, for example, to say um, an additional three, doesn't mean we have to have three. Or, or, or it gives us a up to three extra. Yeah. Well, we've, as, as Mr. West has outlined, we've got to get the Secretary of State's approval. For yes. So, uh, and that's what I was going to come back to. We can't go out to the market until we've got approval from the Secretary of yeah. State. So, 
that as a panel, we will need to decide what the number is, and it may be up to, I don't know, Mr West, whether we can do that, up to a number. Um, I thought so. But we need to make a decision today, and our options are, no, we don't want any more independent members, but I'm getting the feeling around the room that people do. Yeah. Uh, and if people do, then what is the number? And and then is it in our letter to the Secretary of State for approval, do we say up to three new members? When then I think that would be our decision, not the Secretary of State's decision. We're, we're the local police and crime panel, and it's our decision. Who, who we would. So it would give us more flexibility if we went for up to three. It gives us that space. Yeah. We might restrict ourselves if that's right. right. If we don't do that, and on what's up, Mr. Willett, can I just ask a, a, an aside? Um, a, a possibility is tinkering with the model of police pre and crime panels. It's a, an open question that, but mm -hmm. is there any sense that it might be acceptable to recruit to specific areas of activity? For example, a task group that the panel might set up to actually co-opt somebody onto that task group to raise a particular skill. To be on a task group or a subgroup, you need to be a member of the mm. Councillor Beer. Thank you. Uh, in that case, I propose we do increase our numbers or we apply to the Secretary of State for permission to increase our numbers up to three additional members. But as Chris has said, the final number on whether we have one, two, or three is down to this panel. I'll be happy to second that if that's helpful. Okay. okay. That's, so we have a proposal. Okay. Sorry, can I put an amendment, amendment to that? Yeah. yeah. I think we should say that we will look at a, a minimum of two so that we give comfort that we will always have independence and up to five that we that the panel will decide. I think we're obliged to have two, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think it's actually included in the wording. It gives comfort back that we are actually still don't want to have two on all the time. It's up to three additional independent members. That's what we're asking for. Isn't it? So up to three additional ones. Yeah, yeah. Which we have to have. By we have statutes, don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have to have two. So up to a total of five. Yeah. 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 So that we're making that application. Do we need to give justification? Yes, I mean, the justification would be um, how that increase in membership would um, further the balanced appointment objective. And that's, and that's where the skills audit comes in, really. But, but it, it, apart from the skills audit, there's the geography across the whole of the county, there's um, various other things. But it was, we'd have to put a case to the Secretary well, of State. But this might be where the material that I referred to earlier could help. Yes, it would, it would help. So yes. if, you, if you could send that material to independence. Yeah. But I think we have to be careful, sorry, I think we have to be careful on the geography uh, because we've got the geography from the, the district councils, haven't we? Yes. We, we, we could have our ability of having the yeah. independence because of election cycles. Yeah, yeah. But we can add the academic literature to it and say, you know, it, it has been demonstrated, at least through some research, it's a value, the additional value. Yes, so, but, right. but it's demonstrated right here. We, we as a panel, recognise the additional benefits that you as independent co-optees bring to our work. You could say how good yeah. Chris and I are, in fact, couldn't you? Well, yeah, I, I, uh, isn't that fair? I, I don't know, Sarah. I, I think by increasing our independent member uh, cohort, it actually gives us as a panel more flexibility around representation on task groups. Yeah. Uh, so, so that could be an argument. But so the, there is always a co-opted independent member on a task group uh, by by having that extra flexibility. There's also the added advantage. That if Chris and David can't attend a meeting, you've still got, still got two, yeah. at least two independent yeah. members here. Yeah. I don't know if it's important to note as well if you do increase that membership, they can be elected members. Currently, the two seats can't be elected members, but if you do increase it, the additional seats can be elected well, members from that's right. Well, we can, with your agreement, we, we control that process. So uh, I, th I think we could decide internally that. Uh, 
we don't want to increase the number of elected members. That, that defeats the objective. So we could decide not to accept elected members as independents. Okay, so that'd be okay. we've yeah. had a proposal from Councillor. Yeah. Second, uh, Councillor Dilts, all in favour? Can I just can I just add something to you, Jim? Sorry. Yeah. No, no. Just before you go to the vote, it, it it's uh, important to realise that once you've agreed that, if if you agree that, it will need approval of all eight authorities. It's 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 quite it's it's not just it's not like changing the secretariat. It is a change to the arrangements. It's so it will need to go to the eight. Yeah. Um, authorities. Well, that means their executive or leader. I think that would be pro probably be the full council right. for each of those. But that's constitutional. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you on that. But I think it would be the full okay. Council. Well, you'll need to get the consult. You need to consult with the eight authorities. So. But um, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you didn't. No, like, you're quite. You're quite. You're quite so, like, okay, so. It's important. What's the vote? What are we voting? What's the yeah, what's the decision? I vote? think it was to uh, Go to apply to the Secretary of State to increase the number of uh, in the co opted independent members on this panel of up to three more independent members. Up to five. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. And, th and that's proposed by Councillor Bill, seconded by Councillor Dilks. All in favour? So that's you, unanimous, Mr. West. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So can I leave it to you to sort of yep. get organised and yep. to like, get on to it? I mean, clearly it's going to take some time. If it's got to go to the seven district, well, seven districts and the county council to, to uh, uh, did you say full council meetings? I, I think it would probably be a full council. Yeah, it feels like it, but I'll, I'll double check that. I'm, and then once it's gone through there, it's got to go to the Secretary of State. Um, and so it, it's not going to happen before Christmas. Yeah. Which Christmas? <laughs> okay, we'll move on very quickly because it's uh, half of this one. Sorry. Yeah. Going back to this one, are we going to talk about remuneration for co opted members? Um, gonna leave well, that I, I, I think there's been a recommendation already. It's Lindsay have dealt with this already. Are we? Uh, and but it's it, about us being the host, and it and it has to go, to, has to, go to your yeah, it has to the panel. So it's not really a matter for us. Sorry, it doesn't. They, yeah, we we would have to put it up as a recommendation. Yeah, if that's, that's what you, you, so what you right. wish. We could take it to our panel. And that's that's make sure it does trigger through to go through to Matt. Sorry, sorry. Right. Well, uh, that, yeah. thank, thank you for that. I'll second that. that. So that's a proposal that uh, this panel. Uh, takes that forward. It means that the council takes it forward to the remuneration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's proposal second. Uh, Councillor Skinner, all in favour? Yeah, that's gone through then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned the order um, about going to the district first yeah. and the Secretary of State. According to uh, the research that East Lindsay did, the condition it's on the condition that it's agreed by the Secretary of State, it changes the arrangements, mm -hmm. and then the arrangements go to the, the district. Yes. So it's the Secretary of State first. Okay. I just I didn't want you to think it's got to go to yeah. the district's first. Yeah. Subject to, subject to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 it's top of years, everybody. Uh, we are up and see in the way of progress. It won't be the top of anybody's list. Right, moving to item 14, National Association of Police and Fire and Crime Panels. Councillor Burke is our representative. Yeah, and a very entertaining meeting it was too, because the Police and Crime Commissioner elections have just finished. I'm, I'm sorry that he's not here to hear me. Um, and they were competing with each other to say um, how sort of un uncomfortable some of them were because they had new police and crime commissioners that they didn't expect. Um, and uh, one person went so far as to say there was something wrong with the Nottingham police and crime commissioner. Uh, and I, so I intervened because uh, I happened to know him. <laughs> and I said, What's the, well, possibly he's not as good as it. I said, this is, this is supposed to be a professional body, colleagues. I said, we don't need any politics. I said that, we don't need any politics. <laughs> it should, be, should it be recorded? It should be on the front page of the newspaper. Anyway, they uh, all agree. We are, we are recording this meeting yeah. as oh. we speak, by the way. So, okay. So anyway, we agreed that um, uh, there was lots of change. Some people were uncomfortable. Um, but broadly, uh, it was interesting. And, and in many cases, they are now looking at a new relationship with their police and crime commissioners. Uh, but it was a very, very lively, uh, and I would say, 
for my political meeting, but it was, uh, 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 I'd say, broadly positive. I mean, it will take some time for new police and crime commissioners around the country to build up relationships with their police and crime panels. I think that's inevitable that people are newly elected. So, yeah. OK, so no, nothing like that. No, no, there was no fundamental decision to make in change. Right. Um, but it is proving to be a useful body. Uh, there was another meeting due uh, the day before yesterday, but they cancelled it in the light of the general election. Yes. Um, because all the sort of applications and indications that they're working with on the home office have been suspended until after the election. There's been a lot of meetings and everything else suspended because of the general. Okay, moving on to item 15, the work programme. Um, listening to this morning meeting with the commissioner, there's quite a lot of um, comment about technology in policing, a wide variety of new te technology and opportunities for the police service um, to combat crime, particularly through new technology. And I just wondered whether we had a briefing yesterday on county lines. I just, I, thinking it through, I just wondered whether you'd feel we could benefit from somebody from the Lincolnshire Police giving us an overview of all these new areas of technology that they're looking to implement. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Trotter. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr Chairman. And I think, you know, the Commissioner touched on it. Uh, it's very, very, in public, are very quick to say there's no bobbies on the beat. We don't see uniform presence. But I think if we had to, because, you know, as you know, I retired, well, six years ago now, but it's such an important part of policing now, yeah. dig digital, referensic, the Proceeds of Crime Department, and they all work together. And I think it would be really good for us to have a presentation and then we can feed back. So when we get that, where are all the police? Why aren't they here? And we'll say, well, actually, they're behind that desk from that, those 100 phones and 20 computers that were seized, you know, and then he said about crime files as well. It was a big problem when I was in putting it, you have to put a full file in. And even like to get a presentation from the criminal justice department, I think it'd be really good if we could sort of, if possible, have that presentation from these different departments. And then we can feed back to our councils and residents, like actually this is why that there isn't always police on the street. And there's so much goes into policing now and and we are getting a bit you know they do get bogged down and and I appreciate it having been within it and coming out of a bit and I'm sure it's getting worse than better isn't it mm. harder because we're, in, we're getting so much better with, with all this <laughs> new digital you know face recognition but it, behind every new process there's got to be an, an officer or a civilian or an analyst going through it so yeah, I I, I completely um, up for a few more presentations. And yesterday was great. Yeah, did you want to come Just very quickly, just coming back on that one. I, I, I was amazed when he said that it's nearly a full file before CPS will make a decision. I can remember the days when we used to have a, a CPS solicitor in the police station in Skankhouse. And as the charging sergeant, we used to go and tell him what we wanted to charge and he used to stamp it there and then. Hmm. And as a duty inspector, I could authorise the charging. And it was, I can't believe in this wish watch system. The only thing I was going to mention is that I thought that the information on the back of that, which is part of this broad thing, reported as a suspicious email, a scam phone call, text, or a website. I would really like to get that out as far as we can because I bet there's an awful lot of people get scam texts and messages. And just obliterate them. Yeah. And what we need to do, uh, we need to report them in because they do chase them down. I, I do it religiously now uh, because I can't stop um, And I've actually had a, um, a reply back from the scam. It's been email, not the text, I think. I think it was email. It actually shut the email account down and traced it back. Oh, you got my money back. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I think it's 
income. It's not, not, not our function too, but I think we should support anything we do to get this information out there into every household. Well, perhaps you can do that through your district. We're not allowed to put envelopes, stuff in envelopes. It's going to be just what's... I'll bring it up again and see if we can. I'll leave that with him. If we can get that circulated, I think that'll be a great move. For that. So maybe you can go on the back of the next bit. It's the one that you can do. Yeah. Things, yeah. Okay, so uh, the proposal is that we have a briefing on uh, the range of technology that the police are using for particularly combat crime, but maybe you'll as well. Yeah, well, it's range of briefings, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we ask our support team to try and arrange that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So, uh, the date of the next meeting, uh, if you will recall, um, we've got a date of Friday the 2nd of August, where uh, we'll be uh, holding a confirmation hearing for a new Deputy Police Crime Commissioner. And then the next scheduled meeting of the panel is Friday the 20th of September. Just to say, to you, I declare the apologies. I'm on the second floor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me too, Chairman. Well, I think we've had, we have had apologies in, and so we know we know who's coming, but we are tight numbers. So if anybody is, I'm not sure if I reply, but I believe I'm available. Does that make us seven members? I think it does. Yeah. Well done, Councillor. Councillor, we all agree. Councillor, just on a minor note, if one gets the invite to attend, and you know you can't, and therefore you click no, is that taken as a formal apology, or should we still formally apologise? Sorry, we can't attend. Formal apology would be preferred. Okay. Right. Well, that concludes our business today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 22. It's been quite a long meeting, but thank you for your questions and debates with the Commissioner. And I will now formally close the meeting. Thank you. 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 Thank you.